Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I want to show you a whole range of techniques for creating a variety of textured glass effects. So loads of different looks you can go for once you've mastered the basic techniques. So let's get going. OK, so here we are in the media page of Resolve. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a new fusion composition. Let's call this glass effect. Duration of five seconds and frame rate of 24 are fine. Let's hit create and let's double click to open it up in the fusion page. Let's come to the media pool here and I just want to drag in first of all my composite image and my glass texture. So the composite image looks like that. Glass texture looks like that. And I will give you a link to both of these in the description. So let's first of all work on this glass texture. So that's this one here. Let's rename it just so we can be very clear what it is. And let's rename this one as image. OK, as I say, let's work on our glass texture. First of all, let's create a new background. Now, the glass texture itself is 3840 by 2160. Our project, of course, is 1920, or it needs to be 1920 by 1080. So we're going to merge the glass over the background like that. Let's take a look at it. Let's first of all set the angle to 60 degrees. And let's set the center to zero just to get us going. So this is going to provide us with the displacement map and the blur map and various other good things that we're going to be able to do to our original image. So let's just look at that very, very roughly speaking. So let's take our image and first of all, let's add a blur and let's set the amount to something like 32. Let's take our merged glass and bring it into the effect mask input of the blur. Let's take a look at that. So what we need to do is come to the blur settings and switch the channel to luminance. And now you can see we've got that textured blur and we can add a brightness contrast after that merge there. And doing so, we can then adjust the intensity of this frosting effect using these high and low values. So I'm going to set it to something like that. Always remember to clip the black and white in situations like this. Usually a pretty good idea. Just a quick note to say that, of course, you can use the low and high controls within the blur settings, but I find that doing it with a separate brightness contrast gives you more control and better visual feedback as to your flow. So then what I'm going to do is after the blur, I'm going to add a displace. I'm just setting this all up roughly just so you can get a feel for what we're going to be doing, but I will be coming back and sorting other things out later on. So here is my displace. And let's take this merge and bring it into the foreground input of the displace. And let's look at the displace. Now, for the displace, we don't want this radial effect because you see the radial effect is distorting it in the wrong way. What we actually want is the X, Y. And we just want to adjust this light power. And you can see that as we do so, we get this really nice displacement effect based on our original texture. What we probably want to do, though, is we want to have a separate brightness contrast for this displace map. So let's add one in here. And again, let's turn on clip black and white and we can adjust the effect of that again using the high and low. So let's just leave it at some sort of rough default like that. And what I want to do now is I want to come back and, and sort out my original displace map a little bit more. First of all, we want two sides to this. So let me first of all just add an animation here. I'm going to come to frame 10 and let's just keyframe that merge center there. So our glass merged over our background, keyframe that. Just going to move this over a bit so we're a little bit more centered up like that. So negative 0.15, I think is probably about right for that. And then let's come to, so I think frame 80 and set that to something like negative 0.5, just so we've got a nice animation that we can look at like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna park somewhere here so we can see the effect of what we're doing. 
So, as I said, we need the other side of our doors, and we can do that by adding another merge after this merge and adding this merge output into the foreground input of that merge. And then if we flip the horizontal and the vertical, and then we set the alpha gain to zero, you can see we've got the two sides of our doors, all quite simple. The other thing I want to do is create a bit more of an interesting edge to this, so it's a little bit wider. So to do that, I'm going to take my glass and I'm going to click on the rectangle mask tool. And that's created me a rectangle mask that's got the same dimensions as the glass. So 3840 by 2160. I'm just actually going to disconnect it. I'm going to set the width and height to one just to get us going. Then after the glass, I'm going to add a brightness contrast and I'm going to use the rectangle mask as the effect mask input. Let's just take a look at that. So let's come back to our rectangle mask. We don't want solid, turn that off, and we want a border width. Just come back to my brightness contrast and make the correction that I actually want, which is to turn up the brightness. And you can see now that we've got a nice border to our texture. So let's just set up the border width. I think I'm going to go with something like 0.0. .0 zero five for that doesn't look like very much but when we come back to our final result you can see we've got now got this interesting sort of bevel on the edge the only problem is it's overlapping and we're getting this sort of double bevel and we might decide we don't actually want that so let's come back to our rectangle and i'm going to take the height and i'm going to add an expression to it and it's going to be one minus and then I'm going to pick whip the border width and I'm going to type times two. And you can see how that's adjusted that as we adjust the border width, the height of the mask uh, is changing as well. So that's good. So we've got proper control over that here. So let's tidy things up a little bit by taking all of this here. So this is basically our displacement routine and let's put that into a new group so right click group and i'm just going to call that displace so we can do a few more things now we've got all this set up so we've got our blur we've got our displace but what i also want to do is let's look at the final composite i want to have a little bit of scaling of the area behind the glass so i'm going to add a transform after my image there I'm going to set the size to 1.04 and then I can take my displace group and again use it as the effect mask input for the transform and we just need to come over and select luminance for the channel. If I turn that on and off you can see we've got that effect there and I think that helps a little bit. I think probably what we need to do though is we need to add in another brightness contrast so all of these, we need to be able to control them individually. Drop that in there. And I don't think we want the displace to be mottled like this. I think what we want is we want it to be completely solid like this. So that's just tweaking that high value. So let's have a look at that. I think that's going to be better. You see, we go, don't get that kind of odd ghosting effect there. OK, so then the other thing we want to do is we want to just slightly brighten up the area behind the glass. So after that transform, I'm going to add a brightness contrast. I'm going to set the gain to something like 1.15. And again, let's use our displace group as the effect mask input. Again, let's come over to settings and select luminance. And I think that's kind of interesting. We're getting that sort of halation effect from that brightness contrast. Quite nice, I think. The other thing we could do is we could come to this brightness contrast of going into the displace and we could actually think about maybe blurring our displacement just a little bit if we wanted a smoother look to the glass. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to leave that off, but it's just offering you the idea. So I'm going to bypass that. The other interesting thing we can do is actually if we come into our displace group, let's make ourselves a bit of space here. After this brightness contrast here, we can add in insert tool, resolve effects, stylize, and we can look for stylize. 
and you can see immediately this has created this really bizarre looking effect but the style I think I want to go with is stained glass and then I'm just going to increase the scale so now that's pretty interesting we've got this sort of much more textured glass effect and if we think that's too much we can adjust the blend of it like this really pretty interesting and another thing we can do make myself even more space here is after that stylize we can add insert tool again resolve effect stylize you can add scan lines so that's pretty interesting as well and we can increase the scan line frequency like this we can again come to settings and just adjust that a bit like this so loads of stuff we can do really here to create a completely sort of custom glass look so the only thing that remains to do and I don't think I'll spend a lot of time doing it is really we want to do a little bit of work on the animation of this merge here so I'm going to come to I think frame 14 or something and I'm just going to adjust the position of that so we're not quite so far out I'm going to come forward to frame 18 19 doesn't really matter and I'm just going to move it back again to its start position I'm going to come to frame 86 I think and then what I want to do is I want to move it slightly further out than my end position come to I don't know, frame 94 and set that center value back to 0.5 or not 0.5 to negative 0.5 so now if we take a look we're going to get that little bump at either end and you probably want to go in and adjust those keyframes to smooth out the effect I'm not going to bother with that here you can do that so anyway hope that's been interesting giving you a few ideas thanks for watching see you again soon